On the first day of your PhD, you need to do these things. And the first and most important thing, the thing that will dictate your success for the rest of your PhD is speak to your supervisor. Like the first thing, the first thing you should do, you should arrange to meet them in the morning when you first turn up. If they are not willing to do that, they could be indicating to you that they are not the best supervisor for you, at least not the best primary supervisor. You know, turning up on your first day of your PhD, you should be able to meet with your supervisor. And that is even if you have had them as like a master's or honors supervisor before, because you are shifting things into a new gear. And you need to go and you need to just to lay out exactly what you expect and what you want and also ask questions so you understand what they expect of you as a PhD student. There are a ton of things that can go wrong, and um, having a strong supervisor relationship normally solves all of those problems, and uh, it is by far the most important thing to do on your first day of your PhD, the first week, um, but do not leave it any, any more than like the first week if you, the, you can't do it on the first day. So the things you'll be asking are like, what sort of communication can we expect? Like, are there group meetings? A lot of groups have uh, group meetings once a week, uh, once a fortnight normally, uh, sometimes as well. And uh, those are dedicated times where the group gets together, someone presents some recent work, someone talks about papers, someone practices for conferences, you talk about general lab stuff if you're in a lab or general issues, um, new research that you found, you know, all of that sort of stuff. And so that is a like non-negotiable for you in terms of on Monday afternoons, between one and three, we have a group meeting. And you should not that note that down and put it as a block in your calendar that you will always turn up to, no matter what's going on. Another sort of great question is, if you are not my primary contact, who is? Like, if your supervisor is a big high flyer and they have tons of PhD students or postdocs, like, if they aren't the person you go to, who do you go to for the day-to-day -day questions? It could be uh, a postdoc, it could be um, a more advanced PhD student, but essentially you need to know if it isn't them where to go because tons of questions will, will pop up. And all you have to do is find that person where you can go have that like 30 second conversation. Hey, where do I find this? Or have you noticed that this? Or can you help me with this? Like whatever it is, you need that single touch point person. And if it isn't your supervisor, be sure to make to ask and make sure that you know exactly who that is. Um, also stuff like best uh, papers in the field. Now your supervisor will have initially a much better idea of the sort of uh, broad landscape of papers that, and you're going to narrow in on probably a section of that. Now you need to ask them like what are some key papers that you can send me or a list of sort of like uh, references that you can send me that I can start going through. Now on your first day you don't have to read them, but you just need to start asking that question like, this person has got an idea of what they want you to achieve, so you need to ask questions to make sure that you can uh, get that jump start. You know, you're not starting from scratch. Um, and so there could be someone else in the research group that has papers that you could read just to kind of like, okay, here are the 10, 20 key papers, read those, get used to the techniques and use that to, uh, yeah, like just springboard yourself into the, um, into the PhD. So that is by far the first thing. And I would recommend having about an hour to two hours on your own with your supervisor. Now, if they are not willing to do that, they could be a toxic supervisor. Um, and what I recommend you do is check out my other video where I talk about toxic supervisors and the things you can look for and the ways to deal with them. Um, but hopefully at this stage, before you've even started your PhD, you've, you've managed to work out that they're at least interested in your success and well-being. Um, meetings with your supervisor also could involve, uh, you know, general 
uh, lab questions, just like, okay, I need to be able to uh, operate the AFM, the atomic force microscope. I need to understand this type of statistical analysis. Who are the best people to speak to, to go through um, and make sure you get a list of names and contacts. And then when you go meet that person, you can say, hi, my supervisor, professor, such and such, sent me over and uh, they'll be much more receptive than someone walking in and being like, teach me how to do this. You know, like just start that process. A list of key names, key papers, key meetings. Um, and also I think it's important to tell them what you would like. Like you can um, say, I would like a meeting uh, like just between us every fortnight. And for me, every fortnight was enough because it gave me enough time to try the experiments that I was doing um, and then fail at them, retry them, and then go to them with some results. Uh, and fortnightly seemed to work best. Weekly was just too much for me, but if weekly works well for you, then go weekly. I've got a hair that's in my eye line. This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. I'll put a link in the description. There you can sign up to the exclusive content, the invite only Q and A's that I've got planned for the near future, as well as any sort of tips and tricks and hacks that I don't publish anywhere else. You can find it in that newsletter. So go sign up. The second thing that you should do after you have spoken to your PhD supervisor is look at your schedule and create blocks in your calendar. Now, um, if you go sign up to my newsletter, I've got an example template of how I would lay out a PhD uh, daily schedule. I've also got another video, go check it out there. I'll put the link wherever that pops up. Um, in It's called a fail prey fail-proof PhD schedule, and there you'll sort of get a deep dive into exactly what you should do like every day to build up to PhD success. Now, um, after you've spoken with your supervisor, go to your calendar and essentially put in blocks of time. Now, the non-negotiables need to go in first. That's like the group meeting. That's like your meeting with your supervisor. And then around that, you need to put in deep work time. So go uh, read the book and check out the book Deep Work, I think by Cal Newport, I think his name is. Um, but that is fantastic. That just tells you and shows you how to uh, block out time, like an hour and a half, where you just focused and you've got your attention on one thing. And if you do that every single day throughout your entire PhD, and you work on the most important stuff that will actually get you to a successful PhD, which is either thesis or publications, um, there is no doubt that it will yeah, get you there quickest. Um, so yeah, get your calendar, put in the non-negotiables, then put in the hour and a half work spots. But remember that you do have to have lunch. Remember that you do have to put a little bit of admin. Um, and if you don't have anything in the morning, that is where I eat the frog. Eating the frog is another book by Brian Tracy, which I recommend you try out. Um, and it's uh, just talking about doing the thing that, that is very impactful, but kind of you don't want to do because it's annoying. You do that first thing in the morning, sets up the momentum, for the day. Um, and yes, getting a good PhD schedule, like I said, go check out that other video because it's so important and making sure you commit to doing these actions every single day, little by little, they build up to something amazing, which is uh, a PhD. And I read something recently, which I really liked, which was be impatient with action, but patient with results, which means that every day you should be striving to get stuff done little things that build up. And after about a year, you'll be like, wow, all of those little things added up to this paper or this awesome result or these collection of ideas or these conference presentations, whatever it is, be impatient with actions, but patient with the results, the long-term results that you need during a PhD result from small actions every single day, which is why your daily schedule is so important. Make sure you focus on that. Tech stuff. Make sure your laptop connects to the university's printers, to the network, to the Wi-Fi. Make sure you can get on to all of the computers you need. So in the sciences, we often have different laptops and computers on different uh, things in the lab, like different uh, 
uh, uh, instruments and different inventory software and all sorts of things. So I recommend that you just go and you speak to someone who can get you all of the tech stuff sorted. So laptops, um, any logins that you need, any Wi-Fi, and importantly, printers as well. Make sure that you can actually print stuff because no matter how advanced these e-readers and tablets get, I love printing out the key papers so I can scribble all over them. And uh, I think printing isn't going anywhere in the academic world at the moment. So tech stuff is very important. And once that's sorted, that's just sorted. Um, another thing about tech stuff that I would recommend is that you don't actually, uh, you know, you try not to put your smartphone uh, in a place where it is gonna distract you. I actually keep my smartphone away from me during my deep work times because I know the smallest amount of notifications will get me um, over. Actually, my phone is silent, so there's not many of those. It's just the odd uh, uh, like messenger thing that comes through from my family. Um, but secondly, just seeing it there is going to be um, a distraction. So I recommend that you set up your space and your tech space so that you have your laptop where you have all of the sort of software. Actually, software is an important thing. Make sure you've got all the software you need. Um, but yeah, you get all the software and you actually have a little spot for your phone that is away from your desk. It could be in a drawer in your desk. It could be away, but just away from the surface. Um, and that is gonna help you sort of with that productivity. With that, just keeping your attention on the right thing. I've actually got another video about that. Go check it out. And it's how to actually be productive, but you know, by actually not striving to be productive, but, uh, focusing your attention onto the appropriate things at the right time. So go check out that video as well. The fourth thing that you should do is go and introduce yourself to the key people. Now, a PhD is pretty much all about relationships with people that allow you to do the work that you can do easier. Now, what that means is go speak to the um, admin team at your, your university that will help you with all of those silly little admin things that you need to get through. Um, go speak to the people who are in control of certain instruments that you need if you're in the sciences, or go speak to the people that can help you do statistical analysis and modeling and that sort of stuff. Like build those relationships early. Just go and introduce yourself. It's your first day. You can say, hi, my professor told me to come speak to you because you're an expert in whatever butter them up um, and they will uh, sort of just understand that you're serious. You know, the amount of PhD students that I had as a postdoc who I knew needed my help and would, I was told by their supervisor, like, they will come and see you. They never came and saw me. So at least being that pro like proactive PhD student means that you'll be on the front foot from day one, you'll start building those relationships. And then when you go and actually say, hi, I'm ready to start you know, the lab induction for your lab, or I'm ready to uh, you know, ask for your advice on something, you've already warmed up that relationship a little bit. So go around, don't be nervous, don't be shy. All you're doing is introducing yourself. You'll have a little bit of a talk about the project, you know, ask what they're doing, start building up that relationship. It will pay dividends, I guarantee to you later on when you need help from someone, they'll remember you as the nice person that they want to help. Okay, the fifth and the most important thing you need to remember for your first day is to ask questions. Ask questions of everyone, of your supervisor, of people in your office, of other PhD students. Like one thing that I found when I started my PhD was that I, my whole identity was wrapped up in being the clever one. And uh, that meant that I just didn't ask the silly questions. But if you ask the silly questions, you just know the answer, so you don't need to ask them again. So all of the the kind of moments that I've found myself where there's been friction or I've not been able to get past an area or I've been confused could have been solved with the simplest of questions like, you know, when I first started. So don't be shy. No one expects you to know very much once you start a PhD. And uh, a lot of the time, just asking a very simple question just solves all of the problems. It, it reduces anxiety. And uh, it also shows that you're inquisitive. Like when I had, uh, you know, PhD students and master's students come to me when I was a postdoc, I wanted them to ask questions. Also, an important thing is take a notepad and write down the answers to the questions. Just 
because, right, two things. First of all, you may forget the answer, which is absolutely fine, um, and you can look it up again. But the second thing is, and this is one is, I don't know, a psychological hack, is that people love seeing you write stuff down because it means that you're kind of taking their advice and their stuff seriously. So, you know, don't just sit there and write and not listen and engage, but, you know, ask a question, oh, how do I do this? And they may answer and you go, okay, and you just take a little note of it. And yeah, it will help jog your memory. But also when that happened when I was a postdoc and people were coming to me for advice or whatever, I loved it. I loved seeing them write something down because it was like, okay, they care. They're not, they're not, and for, and secondly, they're not gonna come and ask me again because they've written it down. Um, and uh, it kind of gave me a little bit of confidence in them. And really by asking questions, you look inquisitive and it's the early kind of perceptions people build about you that will help you later on. If you're seen as a PhD student that doesn't really care and isn't engaged and you know, that, that kind of reputation gets around, unfortunately, whether it's true or not. And, um, you know, just showing that you're proactive, that you're interested, you're keen, you're willing to learn, asking questions is kind of the, the keystone to uh, building the right uh, sort of commentary around you as a PhD student. So do that, ask questions, don't worry about be looking stupid or, you know, being uh, annoying. You're, you're new, ask every question you can think of. Uh, don't stand there and act like you need to know the answer if you don't. So yes, ask questions. So many questions, 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 questions. So there we are. There are all of the things that I would do on my first day based on my PhD, the things I got wrong, the things I saw other PhD students do wrong when I was in a postdoc, and my 15 years in academic research. So let me know in the comments what you would add to that. But your first day really is about laying the foundations, laying the good habits, building the right uh, kind of... Um, communications between key people, you will be on to a winner, I guarantee it. If this video has been useful, please remember to give it a thumbs up because that helps the algorithm. It helps more people um, find the videos that will be most helpful to them when they are doing their PhD or anything in academia, really. So those are the most important things. Give it a thumbs up and I shall see you in the next video.